Hey guys, this is David Wunderlich for GatorCountry.com, and boy, was it fun to go through Florida's big win over Arkansas. Anytime the film looks like that, I just wish I could diagram the entire game, but I don't have time for that, you don't have time for that, and in fact, instead of going over all of the big highlight plays, I'm going to go through some of the smaller details, like why did Florida run so much, and how did they attack the zone defense, how did they set up things early in the game for later in the game, and plus, a new formation that I haven't seen them use yet this year. And we'll close it out with a couple of delayed blitzes from the defense showing why it was a good idea to use it against this particular quarterback. So let's dive in. So we're going to start by talking about Arkansas's general defense. And Florida ran a lot because you saw this a lot. Five guys in the box. This guy over here, he's sort of hanging by. He's kind of a sixth defender, but mainly five guys in the box, and that's because Arkansas is playing dime. So when a team has five defensive backs, we call that nickel, because a nickel's five cents. There's no six cent coin, so we just move up to dime when they go to six. Now, you would obviously want to use that in passing situations, generally, traditionally, but Arkansas in 2020, in the age of spread, plays dime a lot. And so Florida has five offensive linemen here, plus a tight end, against five box defenders plus this dude so they're going to say this looks favorable to us for running so we're going to try to run the ball and this guy is going to come up Stuart Reese is going to pull around and try to block him this safety is also going to crash down for run support and Richard Garage coming around on another pull or Kadarius Tony coming out here is going to need to block him now what we see is actually neither of them block him Damian Pierce, maybe he's amped up because it's the first carry of the game. Maybe Garage is a little slow, I'm not sure. But he's going to go right past his pulling guard. Tony is up here. He is basically trying to help double cover this guy out here. And nobody takes the safety. And the safety is going to come down and make a good one-on-one -on -one tackle right there on Pierce. So this is pretty representative of why Florida ran the ball so much. They see that they have favorable numbers, six on six, plus Pierce makes a seventh, and Arkansas is going to have guys flying in from everywhere, trying to stop the run, and they make a good one-on-one -on -one tackle. So this is why Florida had a, a decent game as far as yards per carry. They were getting positive yardage, uh, but they weren't breaking anything long because you had you know, this guy coming in, He's got backup right here, and defensive linemen's coming around. They were good at swarming the ball. Here's another play from later on in the same drive, and this is, again, we're going to look, and we've got five offensive linemen. We've got this bunch of three guys right here. That's eight potential blockers for our running back, who's going to go to the left, the strong side. If we look at the defense, again, we've got five guys technically in the box, plus two more over here. That sounds like... 8 on 7 to me. It sounds like 8 on 7 to Florida and Dan Mullen. And so here we go. We're going to fake a little throw out to the side, and Damian Pierce is going to run right behind those bunched receivers. And he's going to get 8 yards on 2nd and 5, pick up the first down. So nothing too fancy here. This is, again, basic numbers. This is what you want to see. And here he goes. First down. Florida did find some better rushing success in the second half. And here is the first play of the second half. You see there's 12 minutes on the clock, third quarter. And here we're going to, again, look and we see five guys in the box. And our box adjacent guy is up here on the offense's left. Now, if we look at the offense, we've got our five offensive linemen and our tight end here on the right. So the strong side of the offense is actually on the right. And this could be some kind of misalignment for the Arkansas defense. And Florida does not have to tip its hand as to which way this is going because they are in the pistol, which is, just means short shotgun. And the running back is directly behind Kyle Trask. So he could go left, he could go right. It's just as easy either way. And so if you guess that Florida is going to go to the right, you are correct. They're going to run right behind that tight end and the pulling guard. And this time, everybody's accounted for. And so Pierce can go ahead and get 10 yards on first down. And the thing that makes it possible is that this guy is coming from behind, and he's going to 
stay out of the play. He's got nowhere to go. And again, here's Stuart Reese pulling around. And he is going to pick up this defender who was coming to crash down. We're going to block him and create this nice little corridor for the running back. And so we'll watch it here in full time. And this is just, again, a numbers game. And Florida's going to have the numbers to the right. They go to the right, and it's a success. Perfect. So now let's take a look at some passing plays. And these next two are back-to-back -back plays from the same drive. This is the second drive of the game. And Florida's going to see Arkansas dropping into pretty soft coverage. So this guy's dropping back. This guy's dropping back. This guy's dropping back. There is another receiver and defender down here underneath the graphic. I don't know what's going on down there. So I don't know if they're dropping three or four super deep, but they're definitely dropping these three guys deep. So on this one, Florida has Keon Zipper split out here. He's not in line. He's out as a receiver, and he is going to run a seam route. And this play basically demonstrates why it's called a seam route. He's going to hit the seam directly between these two deep defenders. So he dropped back this way, he dropped back this way, and Zipper says, thank you very much. I will just grab it directly between you two guys. So I'll back it up and watch it in real time. And it's pretty simple. You just run a guy between uh, where the de defense isn't. Perfect throw from Trask. And we got a 31 yard gain. Here's the very next play, and Arkansas is going to modify its defense a little bit based on what the Gators are doing, but again, this guy is going to drop back deep. This guy has this section of the field. He has this section of the field. We're going to have someone come out here on the little out, so he's actually going to come this way rather than drop straight back, but Arkansas is going to try to get aggressive here, and Kyle Trask is going to burn him for it. So this corner right here is going to come on a blitz, and I don't know if Malik Davis was going to go up for a pattern or not, but he's going to pick up the blitz and do just fine. The linebacker over here is going to come on a delayed blitz. And that means if he's coming in and he's coming in and he's dropping back, Xavier Henderson out here is going to be in single coverage with this defensive back. And so he's going to come up and do a little bit of a stutter and go and get wide open for the end zone. Unfortunately, Kyle Trask uh, sails this ball a little bit You see there, Henderson is behind two defenders. Easily could have made the catch, but unfortunately the throw's just a bit long. So again, watch how Arkansas is getting aggressive and how Florida's going to punish them for it. Here comes the corner. Here comes the linebacker. And there goes Henderson. Too bad on that throw. So Florida spent the early part of the game throwing to the outside a lot with a lot of quick screens, and this is going to look like it's going to be one of those. So this is pretty late in the game, fourth quarter, it's third and one, and it would make sense for Florida to try to get the little bit of yardage they need to move the stinks by having Tony come out here on a screen. And Florida's going to set up the play like that. Um, Tony is going to go out that way, and this defender up here is going to come down to try to stop it. Now, further outside is another Gator receiver right about there. He is going to go on a deep pattern, and you can't see him because he's out of this frame, but there's another safety back there, and the two of them are going to hang out together, and that's going to clear up some space for Trevon Grimes, who is right here. He's going to pretend like he's blocking, so you're going to have to watch his feet because of how tight the camera angle is, but you'll see that he doesn't explode off the snap. He kind of goes a little bit slowly, and that's because he's pretending to block, and that's going to sucker this guy to come up and engage as though it's going to be a block. But instead, Grimes is going to kind of, you know, start a little slow and then explode up the field, and that's going to get him behind his defender for a pretty easy gain. And Tony's motion this way clears out this guy. The deep pattern on the outside clears out the safety, and that leaves this one-on-one -on -one, uh, matchup right here with Grimes, and Grimes is going to win it. So watch the feet, slow, 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 and then there he goes, gets behind the defense, and he uses his size and strength to get yards after contact. So here's the capper on that drive, and 
Arkansas is going to be dropping this guy back into this zone, this guy back into this zone, and our inline tight end here, Keon Zipper, he's going to try to hit the space in between them. If anyone's going to uh, get to him, it's going to be this linebacker right here. So what can we do to try to freeze him? Well, we can pretend like we're going to throw a quick strike out here to Naquan Wright, and he's going to be coming in on a pattern like that, which means this linebacker would have to come up there. So if we watch this, there goes Trask. He pump fakes to the outside, and here's that linebacker, Bumper Pool. His motion is going forward, and that is bad news when a tight end is going behind you. And so here we go. Just loft it up. Your big six foot two tight end can get an easy pass to the end zone. So watch how that fake to the outside holds the linebacker and it allows Zipper to get behind him into a big patch of orange. This is one that I don't recall seeing them do before. Uh, I don't know really what to call it. So I'll just call it the super bunch formation because you've got two guys bunched to this side, two guys bunched to this side, and all of a sudden we're not really playing spread football anymore because no one is spreading the field. Uh, this is the third time Florida has done it, and the first two times it runs, and this is also going to be a run. But it's not terribly effective because the blocks aren't all entirely clean, and Arkansas's defense uh, is actually really good at getting off blocks. That is something that was consistent throughout the game. So if we watch this go forward a little bit, uh, you can see here, right tackle Jean DeLance tries to help out here, and this guy's going to shoot the gap and get through. Now, fortunately on this play, that doesn't matter because Pierce can bounce it to the outside, but that uh, is an example of a block on this play that doesn't really work. Now, we're also going to take a look at center, Brett Heggie. He is impeded a little bit as he's trying to go forward, and so if you watch him, he's trying to engage with this guy right here. It's linebacker Grant Morgan. He's going to follow Pierce all the way to the outside. Um, you see that Heggie doesn't get a hold of him. Now Heggie's ch chasing. He's able to flow that way. And Damian Pierce, fortunately, still gets the first down on third and three. But Morgan is there to get the cleanup. So it's a whole big mess of people. Uh, I don't know how long ago Florida put this in, if this truly is new. And uh, the blocking is just not completely clean here. So you get a first down, but not too much more. So here we are a couple plays later. This is by far the least amount of time between times we've seen this formation. And you know it, I know it, Arkansas knows it. Dan Mullen's going to run play action off it at some point. And I think Arkansas is actually kind of leaning that way because there's only three down linemen right here. Last time there was a stand-up edge rusher. This time there is not. So they're already playing further back on this play. And this time... Our bunch guys are going to go out for routes. So even by the time Kyle Trask is attempting to fake the handoff, um, Arkansas is already going to be dropping back, as you can see right here, because, hey, they're, these guys are going out for patterns instead of just blocking. Now, this play you will probably remember because Kyle Trask points, and he's telling Jacob Copeland, hey, instead of going on your go route straight forward, I want you to go to the corner of the end zone. And we're not going to see it on this because it's not the wide angle. But Jacob Copeland adjusted his route the way his quarterback told him to. And now he's getting it uh, there in the end zone with uh, no one really on him. So heads up play by Trask. Uh, good job by Copeland. Here we go. We're going out for patterns this time. Only three rushers. And it doesn't matter because Kyle Trask directs traffic and tells Jacob Copeland exactly where to go. So we're going to take a look at this formation one more time. We're now in the second half, third quarter, and this time we're going to see a mix. So these two guys on the left are going to be straight blocking, and Justin Shorter over here is going to kind of go out on a pattern. Kadarius Tony is also going to come out further. So we've got half of our guys in the bunch on the left blocking, and the other half of our guys in the bunch on the right sort of looking like they're going out for a pattern. And Arkansas, once again, only has three down. There's no stand-up edge. So they are concerned about the pass here, uh, in part because we saw Florida hit a big pass play off of this. So if we watch this, um, here it's a toss play to Malik Davis. And here, these guys are backing off. They are not coming in because these guys are coming out. And so we've got good blocking up here on the other side. Here comes Davis, and we've got 
good block here, good block here, good block here. We've got a double on Grant Morgan, exactly what you want to see. And Malik Davis now, all right, we come off the double. Stone Forsyth is getting this guy coming up. And so we get a good 11-yard gain there from Malik Davis. So here we're confusing the defense a little bit. Are we doing a pass or are we doing a run? Um, the alignment here uh, is showing that these guys are worried about a pass, and we're going to confirm their worries a little bit on that side. And the result is we get a nice big gain here on the toss play. So Florida at halftime did sort out these kinds of uh, blocking issues that we were seeing in the first half. Uh, this is one of two uh, nice runs that they had out of this formation in the second half. Now let's take a look at a couple of plays from the defense. Uh, this is something Florida did periodically, which is do a delayed blitz. Ventrell Miller is our guy right here. He's going to keep his eye on this pulling H-back, who ends up only blocking, which then, once we see that, he's going to come in and go after the quarterback. And delayed blitzes are good in some instances, not so good in other ones. They are a great thing to do against Felipe Franks. Uh, Felipe Franks loves to sit in the pocket. He doesn't throw the ball away easily. He likes to extend plays with his legs rather than throw it away or just take a sack. And so if you can keep him hemmed in the pocket and then send somebody late, uh, it will probably get home. And that's exactly what we see here. So we watch this play go forward a little bit. Here's Ventral Miller. He is uh, delayed. He is not rushing immediately, but he can see we've got a block here. And that means he's going to go free in this way. And um, the running back kind of running a safety valve. Diapati's got him. So Ventrill is free to just go directly after the quarterback. And there he goes right through the gap. And he meets Zach Carter at the quarterback. So Zach Carter does a good job. Uh, on the other side, he just beats the right tackle right around the side. Nothing too fancy about that. But even if Zach Carter had not completely beaten him, uh, Ventral Miller's, there you can see, Franks is only just now flinching. He's got this even without Carter's help. So this is how you get uh, a guy who likes to sit around in the pocket like Franks. Uh, you do a little bit of a delayed blitz to make sure that you keep him in place, keep him, keep him, keep him, and then Miller comes in late and uh, cleans up the mess. Here is one more of these, and... Here, uh, Todd Grantham gets a little fancier with it than last time. So we have one, two, three down linemen, and we have one, two, three stand-up linebackers in the box. Who's coming? Who's dropping back? It's impossible to tell right now. And what's going to happen is at first, we're going to see both of these guys drop back, but in the end, only Chris Bogle stays back. Uh, this is Ventrell Miller. He's going to come forward, and on a little bit of a delay, Amari Bernie is also going to come forward. So we're trying to disguise things a little here. You see there's the delay, and Amari Bernie is going to be the one who comes in and gets the sack. But again, if we take a look here, we've got two guys failing to block Zach Carter. We've got another end coming in, uh, Felipe Franks. Uh, again, he's just sitting in the pocket. He's not worried, or if he is, he's not doing anything about it. And this is textbook of why you do a delayed blitz. You get these guys coming in to hold them in place, and then a late rusher is going to come in through any gap there is and pick up the sack. And that's exactly what Bernie does. So we watch it in real time. We're going to see a little bit of a disguise here, and Felipe Franks is not going to respond to the pressure at all. He's just going to stand there in the pocket, and it's going to be too late by the time Florida gets a guy th through that gap. So there you have it. Florida used a lot of really interesting techniques, not just to get big plays, but throughout the entire game for everything they were trying to do on offense. And the defense, when it needed a big play, often went to those delayed blitzes, and they really got home well on Felipe Franks. So that wraps up this week of Florida versus Arkansas. I'm probably not going to make a video for next week because it's Thanksgiving, and they're probably just going to blow out Vandy by a enormous score, just do whatever they want. So I don't know how much interesting stuff there will be. If we see something that's really interesting and I can do it really quickly, maybe, but don't expect anything next week. So that's it for now. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.